All right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for jumping on with us and uh, tuning in for another episode of Expert Mentors Live. Appreciate you guys jumping on with us. Um, got myself, uh, John Kitchens, Strategic Business Advisor and Head of Coaching and Mastermind for NAEA, and um, the lovely Jennifer Weiner on as well. Super, super excited. Uh, Jennifer, before I kick it over to you, I want to kind of share with everybody jumping on the call. Maybe this is their first episode they're catching and really what Expert Mentors Live is about. Um, when we started the community, the Honey Badger Fast Forward Movement communities, um, Daniel Beer and Kyle Whistle sat down and with Jay and Michael and said, hey, we've got so many amazing people in this group that really want to add value to each other. So let's take advantage of it. Let's tap into it. And so what came from that conversation was a weekly live training that we put out at noon central every Wednesday. And our goal is to stay consistent with this as long as, as long as we possibly can. And so it's, it's been really exciting. This is our 12th episode that, uh, that you're getting ready to run for us. And we've been, uh, been very fortunate to have some amazing calls so far. So if this is the first one you're, you're tuning into, um, you know, Take, you know, obviously take advantage of the nuggets that are going to come your way, but go back and check out the previous episodes. There's so much gold that has been shared from, from Kyle to Dan to Al Stasek, you know, to Curtis Johnson. There's, there's just a lot of value that's being, being provided through these, uh, through these live trainings and things that will impact your business immediately and things that will um, impact your agent attraction immediately. So take advantage of the trainings. They're there to serve you guys. And uh, feel free to reach out to these to these expert mentors. So, Jen, I'm going to let you uh, kind of share with everybody just a couple nuggets about yourself, mm -hmm. and then let you run with uh, today's training. Awesome. So, I have been in real estate for 15 years. Have been full time, good, bad, and ugly. Um, I'm a mom of four, and uh, so I stay very busy. Um, I really uh, started growing my real estate team uh, in 2014. And I uh, have doubled my year, uh, business the last couple of years. Last year, we sold 198 homes, a little over $78 million of volume. Um, that was the number one uh, female REMAX team leader in the state of Arizona before I moved over to EXP in April. So uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I love what I do. And uh, what, some of what I'm going to be sharing today is through because of things I've learned through our successes. And a lot of it also becomes uh, through um, what I've learned through our fails. Love it. Absolutely. So um, the customer experience I'm going to talk about today is everything of how to systematize and control the experience that your prospects to clients to past clients receive from you. So I'm just going to jump right in. Let's do it. Uh-oh. Looks like we're having a little technical problems here. It was working a minute ago. Okay. Tell me if you can see this. Sorry about that. So no worries. Got it. Looks good. Okay. <laughs> Client communication is the Achilles heel of real estate. 80% of the leads that you generate will be lost without adequate follow-up. 72%, this is a crazy statistic through our National Association of Realtors, in fact, um, but 72% of real estate clients cite that poor follow-up and communication as the reason why they would not use the same agent again. 72%, so meaning that only 28% are going back to the same agent. I'm gonna to discuss today the three phases of your client's life, the future, the present, and the past. Um, all of these three stages are important because each represents an opportunity to broaden your business base and add a greater depth to your future business. So this is all about relationship building. You know, we might sell houses, but it's the people at the end of the day that matter. Communicating should not be viewed as a process, not a one-shot deal. Um, you may have to communicate with them two, 10, 20 times before they ever take action. And the fact is that if you're not communicating on a continual basis, they'll likely forget all about you. And that happens whether it be prospect or maybe the past client loved you and two years later forgets your name. 
Um, and I'm going to discuss today at, uh, communicating with your clients at the three different stages, so prospect, client, past client. Um, this green box here, if you want to read that text, is extremely important in what I'm going to be talking about. So your communication should be regular, relevant, and respectful, and your overall objective should be to ensure that you stay top of mind with a message that speaks to their needs so that you will ultimately be able to convert a prospect into a client, client into a fan, and a past client into a walking billboard for your services. I love so, that. Hmm. I'm going to start starting the relationship. Um, Follow-up is more difficult to systematize. A lot of the things I'm going to be talking about today, everything is, is in a system. I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't systematized because we rely on our heads, they're going to fail us. People fail systems, systems don't fail people. Now, when you're talking to prospects, some will move it within three months or less, some in three to six months or more, and others never at all. Um, some will tell you that they're going to move in 12 months, they move in three. They're going to tell you they're going to move in three months, they move in 12. Um, some may request one or more reports or services, and other may request more follow-up in a longer or shorter period of time. Um, we're going to be talking about how to use your CRM. Um, each call is scheduled individually, but the written part of our, my communication with them is all systematized. So I'm not, this is not a lead conversion webinar today. This is all about communication with um, clients and uh, prospects. But I'm gonna just give some key tips in the prospect communication, the prospect phase. So having a CRM is of course the basic foundation, whether it be, there's a lot of great ones out there, Boomtown, KV Core, it could be a Google spreadsheet. I find that it ha you have to find the right one for you, and then you have to use it daily. I'm in my, I am in my CRM every day that I'm not taking off. Speed delete is Jennifer, really what, what What CRM are you guys using? We are using Boomtown. I've been in Boomtown for three and a half years, and we run everything in Boomtown. So everything we're going to be talking about today, our transaction management, our past client follow-up, everything is handled in, in one system that's very easy to use. Very cool. And, and, and the point is, and hopefully everybody get, catches this, the best CRM is the CRM you will use daily. So mm -hmm. just want to make sure that you guys understand that. Jennifer just mentioned the one you feel comfortable with that, that you enjoy getting into each and every day. Mm -hmm. Have an action plan for your prospects depending on their timeline. If they're looking at moving in a year, you're probably not going to call them every week, or I would advise not to. Um, if they're going to be buying within three to six months, uh, we do call them every week. Uh, average of eight touches is what the average is to convert a viable lead. So if you call them once and never call them again, they're probably not going to be working with you. We use multiple touches, phone, text, email, video, email. Uh, text is real popular, especially amongst millennials. Um, it's easy, people can text back at work. Video email, is, I love that because it's a way to personalize things and they see more than just a text email. Call at different times of the day. Um, we do have morning and evening hours that we find that we're able to touch more people. Um, time blocking days on weekends where you're gonna call in because that's where you're gonna find a lot of people at home. And at the end of the day, consistency is key. All of the magic is going to happen in the follow-up. So it is possible to systematize the client care experience. Now, a lot of the things I might be talking about, I do have a team and I have systematized it. So each one of my team has a key role. You might, there might be solo agents or maybe it's an agent that just wants to get their their first assistant, or maybe just start with their own first virtual assistant. Everybody that's involved in your process, whether it be a transaction manager that you outsource to, or a virtual assistant assistant, or if you have a big team, just make sure that everybody has a clear team role. And it won't work if all team members aren't in. So if your transaction manager handles things completely differently, isn't logging things in, doesn't sound like the right hand's talking to the left hand, the client's going to feel that. So it's really important that everything is systematized and everybody has a clear role. Um, everything is a part of our CRM. So like I said, I, I mentioned, we 
through today is handled through Boomtown. Uh, first impressions matter. Now I do have a physical office. Some agents work from their home. Um, we have a little welcome uh, sign here. I don't know if you could see that. We put their name in. So when we're meeting with somebody, we're gonna say, welcome Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And just a way to personalize a process so they know that they're important to us. Now, if you're gonna show up at uh, Starbucks or maybe it's even an open house that you're gonna meet them at, um, this is something that you might wanna think about bringing in there. But when they come into our office, we want our Wainer Group stamp to be on everything that we do. So we have little small gifts, branded swag. You know, the gifts don't have to be expensive. Some of our gifts, our welcome gift is $8. Um, some of the gifts I'm gonna go here are actually, we've uh, systematized it so they're not expensive, but it's that touch. When they come into our office, we have toys for kids. So we encourage them to bring, if they wanna bring their kids in, have a way. We always have snacks cold drinks um, right now because it's summer. <laughs> so maybe you're meeting them at a Starbucks or open house. Make sure you have some ice cold water. Um, if it's uh, winter where you're at, you might have some hot tea or cocoa. Um, but just uh, making that warm first impression where they really feel that red carpet rolled out for them. Um, when we meet our clients, we don't want to just throw them in our car. We want to get to know them. We want to get to know how we can help them. We want them to know our value proposition. Um, this has to be a repeatable structure. So we have our consultations, the way we handle buyers, the way we handle sellers. Uh, we do have a visual presentation. Um, this is, you can have it as a PowerPoint. We have a buyer binder that's really easy to take with us anywhere. So whether we're meeting a, um, a client maybe at their house or a Starbucks or at maybe a home that we're going to see, we have something to go through with them to just let them know a little more about us, what we, what we offer, what our unique uh, selling propositions are, learning more about them, and also the buying process. Um, we have a consult folder. So pretty, pretty much everything you're going to do, you're just going to make sure you have on hand and that every buyer is handled that same way you go through the process. We have a referral acknowledgement form. This is actually something we ask buyers and sellers to sign right up front. Uh, we're big about giving back to our community and for every referral we get, we give back to our charity, Sunshine Acres Children's Home, that we're really passionate about. Every one of my team members takes a tour there. Um, it's really awesome. I and mean, when, we're, when we're talking to our clients, we actually, I still get goosebumps every time I talk about them. Um, be bold. Always ask for their business. Um, understand statements versus objections. Sometimes our clients come to us and they might say, um, that your commission's real expensive. But that's not an object. That's a, just a statement, right? It's not really an objection. You know, you don't have to necessarily respond to it just because it, you know, our, our commission is higher than what a lot of other agents might charge because we offer a whole lot more. Establish authority and trust. Uh, we have 40,000 agents here in Phoenix. Uh, 8,000 new agents just entered our market last year. There's a lot of agents that are flying part-time, really don't have um, the, the guidance that they're able to offer their clients. We want them to know we are the authority. We know what we're doing. They can follow us. We don't want to be an Uber agent. Uh, we don't want to be an order taker type of agent. We want to be an agent that establishes our professionalism and our expertise right from the beginning. Jennifer, uh, what? Um, so on first, we're going to want to. Hey, Jennifer. Yeah. On on. Any of those pieces there from establishing authority and trust, are, are, are you sharing success stories at that time, testimonials, or is there anything that you're leaving with them that kind of positions you guys as the authority? Yep, absolutely. And that, ha that happens from the time before we meet the appointment to the time after. Yep. You know, one thing that's really yep. powerful is stories. You know, if you're working with a buyer, uh, did you get your last buyer $20,000 off the, low, the list price? Did you go up on a multiple offer situation and maybe win over those other offers because you were, we, what we do is submit offer packages. Um, so you wanna, we have testimonials, we have examples of how we present offers. 
we have all of that in our buyer binder that we can take from consultation to consultation um, to let them know like these what are what, these are what our past experiences are we when we can we get um, we get the testimonials and video um, other times it's going to be on Zillow or Google or Facebook that's awesome I'm sure you'll touch on that here in a second so we want to set expectations so for buyers um, you know, we say qualified buyer because they might have a bank letter, but is it, is it a qualified buyer if they're looking under $200,000 in Scottsdale? Probably not. So we're going to want to set proper expectations so they're not disappointed. Um, we really get deep into the market. We have market data that we're able to share with them. Um, for sellers, you know, once they sign on with us and we talk about pricing, you know, we don't want to, and we warn them up front that some agents will you know, win the listing because they're going to buy the listing with a high price. But if you give them that price and then have to do multiple price reductions after, um, then it, it sets them up for disappointment. So we want to be realistic. And also we need to determine what I call critical mass. So critical mass for buyers and critical mass for sellers is going to be different. And it's going to be different for whatever market you're in. Um, so if I'm dealing with a luxury segment, Critical mass might be, um, well, we talk about this every 30 days, um, but it might be after three months when the listing starts to age. If I'm under 300,000 in this market for a seller, a critical mass could be two weeks because that's really when the home should be sold. So we just, we talk about to each client what critical mass is and when we need to have conversations. Now for a buyer, it can be, um, you've been looking for three months. You told us that you need to buy in 30 days. And now we need to have what would be like a second buyer consultation to discuss. We're at this critical mass phase where we, um, you know, something needs to uh, be done in order for us to move forward and be successful with meeting their goals. So now we have the client. You've gotten the consultation. You've got them. Um, you've touched them eight times. You have a client. So now what? We like to get very personal with our clients to know their, um, know more about them, know how to communicate with them. Some clients, they don't ever want to talk on the phone. They only want to deal with text. Um, some clients don't have email or text. They only want to talk on the phone. Birthdays are really powerful. So um, we want to know when their birthday is. Uh, we want to know more about what their favorite restaurant is, their favorite charity. Um, when we know those things, we can personalize this experience for them. You know, in the past, we might, um, we were giving wine bottles uh, for closings for people that didn't drink alcohol, you know, avoiding things like that. So they feel like, wow, this was really personalized. This whole process, they thought about me the entire way. So what we do. Jennifer, what are you? Oh, go ahead. I was just curious, what were some of the ways that you were capturing that information? Are you creeping on them a little bit on social media? Or are you just being you know, mindful, being aware in conversation. So what are some of the ways that you're picking and pulling that information? Well, we send them a VIP questionnaire right up front and that's done through SurveyMonkey. So it just asks Perfect. them a little bit more about all of these things. So that's part of our process. It's a task in Boomtown. So if we haven't gotten it back, that task remains unchecked. And some people might not, not everybody wants to fill one of these out. So some people might elect not to. Most do, most want you to know more about them. Sure. Now, when they sign on to us, um, and this is great, we have a lot of people relocating from here, we'll have um, just a little welcome gift. And it'll be, uh, we have a little lo local basket of uh, coffee and candy. Um, so if they're coming to the desert, it's really nice to have some of these like um, ho uh, local um, goods. Um, we have what we have called our promise letter, what our promise to them is. And we, what we want is we want this experience to be so amazing that they're going to refer us to our friends before we ever even get to closing. So we set that, that expectation up right up front. So it, we're already um, planting the seed that this is, well, this is what our goal is. And if we get to closing and we haven't gotten a referral, maybe we failed in some way. And how can we be better? Everything, all of our gifting is all systematized. So um, even though we might will personalize things, there are going to be tasks for the welcome gift, the closing gift. I'm going to talk about what we do. We have another gift that's our most popular gift. 
So wowing the client through excellent service. And some of these, when I said I mentioned through fails, when we were growing and we were growing at an exponential rate, there were times where our customer service slipped. And every time that happened, it was a learning experience for us to group as a team. See, what do we have to do to systematize this so this never happens again? Because we're going to continue to grow. And we need to make sure that no matter how hard we grow, a client doesn't feel like a file. They feel like this, we want them to feel like they're our only client. So consistency is key. Creating a checklist. Now, a lot, some of the solo agents on the, um, on the meeting, on the webinar today, just having a checklist, and it could just be a written doc that you're going to implement to your CRM, but make, um, plan that out. See how it's going to look for you. It might not be everything that we're implementing into our business, but there's definitely some things that you're going to find on today's webinar that you'll probably want to add, and everything is going to be done through a checklist. So that way, you don't get busy and somebody comes to your, someone goes into escrow and you totally don't follow the process for that person. You want to make sure the process is followed on everybody. Take notes, whether it's really important as a team to take notes and document everything because when, um, say, Beth calls on our team, we don't want it to be a completely different conversation where they go, Jennifer didn't tell you. Um, but even if you're a solo agent, you'll find you'll get busy and you totally forgot. Oh, I remember your dog died last week. I totally forgot. And you don't want that. You don't want to forget. So make sure everything, whether it be their kids sick, their dog died, they're um, taking a vacation next week, all of that is documented in your CRM. Um, active client communication systems. So it's really important that once they go, once they're a part of our team, we won them. We're not a turn and burned kind of team. Um, we have a pre-listing consultation, so great. We did the listing presentation. They signed. What happens next? We have a document that we leave with them that shows them process uh, step by step what happens next. But we also want to have another what I call a pre-listing consultation, where we talk over all of those steps because it could be in a written document, and if you're a high D or a high I, you might not read through that document, but you really love that personal touch. Um, for the more analytical personality types, they love documents and they might not want to talk to us. Um, we do a lot with video because you can record a video once and use it over and over and over. This is all tasked through our Boomtown system. So at, through every step of the way, we have escrow videos and, hey, this is Jen, they see your face, and then you talk about what to expect next. Um, you have to make a commitment to weekly communication. If a seller doesn't hear for you for two or three weeks and then they come, hey, what's going on? You never want a client coming to you asking you what's going on. You want to be the one to tell them, hey, here's what's happening next. Here what just happened. For a buyer having the client care call, review what happens next in the home search, um, reiterate your value proposition. If you're letting go touch of your buyers that are actively working with you, they might stop into an open house and write that offer. They might go into a new home construction. So just make sure that you're letting them know how the process unfolds. Um, weekly communication, some hand-picked listings. If you're what I call an order taker and you're just waiting for your buyer and seller to send you listings, some agent's going to send them a listing that they're going to go see with that agent and you're going to lose a client. So making sure that you're hand selecting a listing and saying, hey, I know you're looking for a master on the bottom level. This is the perfect house. Um, don't be an Uber agent. Don't be an order taker. Love it. Hmm. What we do with sellers is, and we've been able to systematize this through both our My Marketing Manager and our virtual assistant, this is something that easily, um, even a solo agent could easily implement through a virtual assistant. Um, every week we're going to send them a seller report where they, we've marketed the home, where the, um, what the online and the offline feedback has been. So when we go and we do need to get a price reduction because we know that's what it's going to take to sell, it's not, well, what marketing have you done? Well, you know, and where they push it back onto the agent. We want there to be no question in their mind that we've done everything, turned over every rock to find them a buyer, and it's really coming down to price and time. So if they want to wait another one or two years for the market to catch up to their price, 
they have that or they can drop the price. So there's so many details that happen from contract to close and this is where um, we find that so many agents can stumble because when you're, especially if you're a solo agent, you're busy, you're showing buyers, you're on appointments, you might not get that lender call at two o'clock. So um, having um, the expectation of here's what happens next. They're not just getting surprised by low appraisals or uh, inspections gone wrong. So after we go into contract, we have an escrow consultation now. So this is an additional document where here's what happens next, a video, and an also phone call to talk through the process. So we're hitting all personality types and different levels of uh, forms of communication. So whatever they prefer, maybe they don't want to talk to us on the phone, they want to read the document, maybe they just want to watch the video. But it really gives them a clear understanding of how the process unfolds and what they can expect. Um, if you're not going to be the point of contact, you have a team or transaction coordinator, just establish who the uh, transaction coordinator or point of contact is so that person has confidence in who they're talking to now. Um, our most popular gift isn't sometimes our elaborate wine baskets or our cute little local goods. Sometimes it's this, what we call our Bincer gift. Now, the inspection period for both buyers and sellers can be the most uh, sometimes stressful part of the transaction. Um, I know when I was uh, negotiating these, it was like the most, uh, I hated part of my job to go through these inspection reports and everything that was wrong with the home and all the repairs that buyers would want and sometimes it goes smoothly, but at least in our market right now, more often than not, they're more problematic. So after we get through that phase, we send them a little popcorn and candy where we say, hey, kick your feet up, enjoy a movie on us tonight. We're past this point of the transaction. And the reason it's been popular is because we, the people, our clients are feeling like, hey, they feel our pain. <laughs> they know that it, while it was in our house, they understood what we went through and they thought of us. And this gift is 12 bucks that we send out. Um, and like I said, it's more popular than sometimes our $200 wine baskets. Um, after the inspection is when we are looking for, we got past this hurdle and we're getting closer to closing. So find out what your client's plan is for closing day. Are they moving on a Saturday? Would dropping by with a few pizzas on a Saturday while their teenage boys are moving their couches in would that be very memorable for them? Do they need moving boxes? Um, one thing we saw, a uh, one of our clients put a social media post on Facebook. Um, does anybody have moving boxes? We had moving boxes there the next day, and she was shocked that we didn't even tell her. Or she didn't ask us. We just delivered them. I got this uh, awesome. little tidbit uh, from Kyle, um, and we implemented immediately, and we're, we've already seen another uh, jump in our Zillow reviews. But instead of waiting till closing, when they're buried in paperwork and moving plans, ask for the Zillow review, or maybe use Yelp. We, we pretty much, our main um, channel is Zillow. Ask for the Zillow review at the height of their customer experience, which is usually right after contract acceptance. Um, that's when they're the most excited and you can get them um, before you, you hit closing. When you do have- I love it. Hey, Jennifer. Um, we had a we had a question from Terry was asking uh, where do you get your uh, the the Benzer gifts? Where we do, do those in house. Um, I know Amazon does have some things that you can do to order them, um, but we just have made them cheaper in house. So we buy in bulk. Cool. Thanks. Um, closing gift, intentionalize and personalize. Um, I told you my party foul on sending uh, wine to somebody that didn't drink alcohol. So just making sure, and if you can, if it's one of their favorite sports teams, anything that you can do to personalize the process definitely makes them feel special. Attend closings and signings when possible, getting their picture. Um, you know, that's a lot of times when you can grab that video testimonial for the um, clients that are comfortable in video. These are just some examples of our closing. Um, we really try to think about the client. This move-in cleaning bag, that costs us like 12 bucks or something cheap. Uh, we just put, like a lot of times when people are moving, whether it be buyer or seller, and they have all their stuff in boxes, they don't have toilet paper in the bathroom. They don't 
have anything to maybe the counters weren't left very clean. Um, we have a little candle. We just put some cleaning supplies in a branded uh, grocery bag that they could use over and over. And that's not their only closing gift. That's just here. here here's a little goodie bag so, to help you. And we find they need them a lot. It could be sparkling cider, little, uh, just a little local goodie, goodies and businesses. So having more of like a home buying ceremony is what we've been doing to um, welcome buyers into their new home. Now, Zillow reviews are important to get the five-star reviews, to build your credibility. But we also really want the negative survey system that we've implemented at multiple points in the transaction. So if a client's not happy, say they just went listed or they just went under contract and there's something we could be doing better, we want the opportunity to have the time before closing to make it right. So um, these are, are the few different stages. So a buyer that way, a seller right hearing us been multiple um, and not like huge problems, but a lot of little things that we've been able to just tighten up because now we know about them. Yep. But what was happening before is we were getting to escrow and I'm patting myself on the back because I just sold their home for $80,000 more than the highest model match. And when I asked for the review, the client says, well, you never showed my house unhappy. But had I known before, I would have been able to address his, his objections. A few different things you can use, Google Forms, Typeform, SurveyMonkey, a lot of different ways that you can implement this in your business. Um, one of the most important questions that we have is how likely are you to refer our team? And I have a script for that. I'm going to be going over in a couple slides. So dealing with what we call critical clients, maybe on our surveys, maybe it's just a psychologist too. Um, so how do we manage them? Because we, um, we don't want to just turn every critical client away like, okay, there's nothing we can do to make them happy. First we do in our system, tag them. So we know like this is a critical client. Um, discuss the potential outcome changing activities, uh, price reduction, um, get a quote for home cleaning, window cleaning, pool repair, some of the things that maybe feedback that you're getting from the showings. Um, when we have messed up before, we've sent little gifts, you know. Uh, I got this another idea from uh, my lender actually sending a little monkey and bananas and I'm um, sorry we've been monkey. Hey, we heard you. It's important to us and we're working on correcting it. I've had to go on a couple second consultations. So I got the listing presentation. Um, their home's not selling. They, it's a critical client. I've gone out back to their homes in their living room and talk to them again, reiterating our marketing program, knowing that um, um, a lot of it is just not talking at them, listening to them, and hearing their concerns, knowing that you're not just sweeping it under the rug. Um, mindset, every client is your only client. Again, we don't want them to feel like you're a file number, like, oh, what, who? <laughs> so friendly and helpful demeanor at all times, even when they're coming at you, it's up to us as a professional to maintain our professionalism, know their situation. Um, this is also really important for any teams on the call today. Um, when they're talking to us and then they're, they're talking to us, their transaction coordinator, we don't want our transaction coordinator to ask, I'm sorry, what file were you? You know, we don't want them to have a different experience than when they're dealing with us. So know their property details. Don't, uh, you know, like maybe if four months since you were in their house and you forgot that they didn't have a basement and you asked them about their basement. You never want to be caught off guard. Um, know their time frame and motivation. Any vacation date special showing instructions. If they told you they were going on vacation in two weeks and then like you were asking them about a showing. You don't want to get like uh, caught that you forgot something. 
Um, key to success, I mentioned this earlier, uh, document, document, document. So whether it be you have a team, you need to make sure everybody's on the same page or you're a solo agent and you remember everything. There's so many arrows going into our brain at any given day that if you try to just rely on your brain, it will fail you. And I uh, just had hit my 40th birthday this year. I'm already, uh, I can already say that um, I don't rely on my brain for anything nowadays. It's, um, you know, it, it's absolutely critical because, you know, we, we, we will always assume positive intent with our team members. Everybody has the best of intentions, but when we leave it up for that, it, it's going to fail every, every time. It's just human nature. So mm -hmm. leverage the tool, leverage the technology. It's a, it's, it, that allows, especially when you have team members, it allows to, you know, to stay on the same page on every, with every client and every every file, every transaction. And the other, the other key thing too, is that you don't have to carry that stuff around in your head, right? Get it out of there. You, yeah. don't, you don't need to, you don't need to, you don't need to take that with you everywhere. So just put it in the system, allows everybody to stay on the same page and you can keep moving forward. Yeah. It frees up mind space. So you can focus on more, um, whether it be family time, personal time, creative time, working on your business, not just in your business. Um, if you get all those little tidbits that are weighing you down. So, um, client had a good experience. Now what? <laughs> Establish your MVPs. So we, it could be, you can call it something comp completely different. This is the way we um, refer to our clients. So we have MVP. Now these people haven't referred us yet, but we ha they had a great experience and they're likely to refer. MVP gold, um, we classify as somebody that has referred us at least once. And then our MVP platinum is our continued referrals. And those people are gonna be treated like gold in our database. Keep in touch, and this is something you'll have to systematize too. Um, we do both uh, newsletters, email, and a written email. I mean, it's our newsletter. So they'll get a newsletter in their mailbox, they'll get a newsletter into their email. Market updates, there's a few different um, things that we've used, uh, core fact, viral, um, Neighborhood value updates, whether it be top producer or your MLS. Um, I love video, so whether you use Bomb Bomb, Viral has a really great product. Um, getting them to see yep. your face and talking has been really powerful. And we use the um, video uh, newsletters too. Um, one thing we've also been able to do that has been really um, successful is custom audience on Facebook and retarget. So every one of our clients that has a Facebook account, this is also would have been identified in the VIP questionnaire, we're gonna retarget them. So you create a custom audience on Facebook, um, you can share your success stories, you can share your market updates, but that way you can control them seeing your material when they're on Facebook. Moments of wow, um, here's some wow ideas that we've implemented, um, birthdays, if it's an MVP gold, you can send uh, cupcakes to their work where they're sharing their, you know, sprinkles cupcakes uh, with their team. Um, or maybe it's brownies. Girl brownies you send out cards as a product that um, I use when I was a solo agent. Um, social media shout outs. Uh, handwritten cards go a long way. Um, so I, it's a, yeah, it's a part of our process of what we do um, every morning because it also makes you feel good. Uh, thinking of you, text, um, event invite. We do a lot with our past client events. And if you're a team, it's awesome. If you're a solo agent, there's definitely ways that you can start having these events. Um, my favorite is the theater rental. Um, I just, uh, we just had ours at Jurassic World. I made my, uh, oldest daughter and her boyfriend dress up as big huge dinosaurs and um they were a big hit on the screen <laughs> I'm, we have our past client stories we had our sunshine acres there uh pastor tim with sunshine acres was sharing some stories about uh, every november we'll do santa claus some games little uh, uh, have our charity there and we give away pies and so people can come in, we give them a five hour block, just pop in, grab a pie, bring your kids for pictures of Santa, have some hot cocoa, meet our charity, 
And it's just been a really fun way to connect with our clients and the community. Here are some pictures um, of that. And um, having a little photo booth is, we have found it really important because then we give the, our clients the opportunity to show them um, how much fun they have with us. Awesome. I'm going to share a few uh, referral ask script and a review ask script. You know, very simple. Um, and this is uh, obviously like for our team. So, mm, hi, Mr. Client. This is Jennifer with the Awesome Group. I just want to see if you received our gift, reminding them that we sent them value. I know Marsha has been working with you throughout this process, and I just wanted to ask on a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to refer your friends and family? And if they say one, we're probably not going to get to the next step, right? <laughs> but if we're a, your referrals help the kids, for every referral we get, we donate to Sunshine Acres Children's Home. Now, we had already, way before, explained who Sunshine Acres was, and we're planting the seed. And ask, you know, um, who do you know that I might be able to reach out today? Now, if somebody, a lot of times they don't have them right away, but like, great, when you have a referral, instead of just passing my information along, would you mind giving me their information? That way I can proactively reach out and make sure that they hear from me. Um, our Zillow review ask script is a little um, similar. Um, we ask them on a scale of one to 10, how has your service been with us so far? And then, hey, can I ask you a big favor? Reviews are really important to our business and for every review we also uh, donate to Sunshine Acres. Would you take? Would you mind taking a few minutes to uh, give us a five-star review? And re in return, we'll uh, send a donation in your name. I wanted to leave um, everybody with a few of my favorites. Um, the E Myth Revisited. It's not technically customer service, but it's all about the foundation of systems. Um, everything that we went over today, you're going to have to systematize it to make sure it's consistent. And everybody should, I am a certified coach. I make, no matter where you're at in the um, coaching process, we want all of our coaching members to read that. Mr. Schmooze is a real fun one. It's a great audible. So as you're driving around, um, definitely uh, get that one. Uh, Raving fans was also something anybody that in our customer service department reads. It's a really, it's a mindset book on how to, um, how to really create those raving fans out of clients. So want to open this up for questions. I don't know if you see any questions rolling in. No questions yet, but um, I, I definitely, um, I have, a, I have a, a question and a couple other recommendations as well that uh, would really help layer this in. And I hope everybody on with us live or listening to the, the recording, understand that, you know, what Jennifer's talking about here, it's about creating lifetime value. And, you know, most agents get caught on the transaction treadmill, and this is what gets us off of it. And so one of the book recommendations that really um, will, was a game changer for us in really understanding everything that Jennifer's talking about here was um, Jack Mitchell's book, Hug Your Customer. And Jack's book was, was foundational in understanding. It's, a, it's, it's an awesome read. The other, the other book um, that I would highly, highly recommend for your entire team because it's all about the experience, right? It's what Jennifer's been talking about. It's the consistent experience from, from the moment they come in, in into your top of funnel from, from now on. And it's, um, it's a newer book from Chip and Dan Heath called The Power of Moments. And it really ties the science and everything around it and how you strategically design those moments and like everything that Jennifer's been sharing and talking about today. So those are two other, along with the three that Jennifer, that I would recommend to really bring your whole, this whole system and process that Jennifer's taking the time to, to share with you guys today on that. Um, but I do have one question for, for you, Jennifer, is that, you know, what are you looking to improve in this process right now? Um, you know, first I will say we are always looking to improve. And as you mentioned, those books right now, I just wrote those down. And one of the things I love about our fast forward movement is how collaborative we are. And we're all growth minded. It's actually one of our core values of our team. And one of my favorite core values is being growth minded. So there's definitely always going to be ways we can improve. And right now we are tracking our metrics. Like, did we double our referrals? And doubling our referrals this year is one of our goals. 
Um, and as, as we scale up, um, I'm, I want it to even get better. I don't want it ever to be where we get so busy that we fall back on customer service. I want it to be that we're creating the revenue that allows us to provide um, the, the customer service experience and making sure that as we grow, whether uh, if you're a solo agent or your team, that you have that mindset of servicing the client. Yeah, yeah, it's so, it's so critical. Now, are you, um, so, so for everybody, the, the question that, that Jennifer asked, that survey, it's, 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 the, it's the right question, it's the only question, um, which is the net promoter score. Are you calculating and keeping up with your net promoter score and then also tracking it individually? Um, no. So that's something we recently implemented is the different, the surveys that are coming the different levels of the process. Um, right. So it doesn't really give us a score. There's just a series of questions that they answer. Um, and then we know like where we need to step in. But tracking them is definitely something we can um, get better at. Too. That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, improving on that. So you know, Jennifer's question is you can study a little bit more on it at the ultimate question 2.0. You can just Google net promoter score and it'll break down the science of why that is the ultimate question to ask to, to, to truly get somebody's feedback with that question. One thing that uh, I definitely want to highlight back on is, um, and I love it, right, is owning, is owning the mistakes and, you know, not trying to push blame and, you know, that's like a core value of ours, 100-0 principle, ultimate responsibility, and just, just taking ownership in that. And so I think that's, that's an awesome get for everybody. Hopefully you guys wrote that, wrote that nugget down. And the how she... <laughs> I, I mean, it's simple, but it's gangsta how you're uh, just the survey monkey to the VIP questionnaire to get relevant information on them to be able to improve the, the experience right out of the gate. So that's, uh, that, that was definitely a nugget. Hopefully everybody caught that one as well. Yep. And, um, and you know, one thing we have found is um, for some of our uh, demographics, we'll um, give them a, a survey that they could actually mail back to us if they're not online. Um, with a self-address self stamped envelope, and we get those back from time to time if they don't send us uh, the VIP questionnaire back via SurveyMonkey. Gotcha. That's, uh, that's awesome. So within this, you talked about everybody having different responsibilities throughout the process and different touches. Who ultimately owns the customer, the overall customer experience? Well, me as a team leader, but um, we do have a public uh, relations director on my team where she is directly tracking reviews and, um, and referrals, and she's responsible for that. So her success and her role is going to directly depend on how many increase in reviews and referrals we get. I love it. Great. That's, that's for everybody. She's, um, you know, tying... So it's agreements versus expectations, right? So forming the agreement of those critical key metrics of success, right? So that function understands that they're doing a good job and Jennifer understands that they're doing a good job. It's not just, well, I think I'm doing a good job. It's just like what Jennifer shared earlier about why you want to implement multiple touches on survey feedback throughout the process so you're not hit at the closing table with, well, you know, you get, yeah, you sold it, but... So at least you're, you're aware of that through, through the process. So um, tying those numbers and I think, you know, diving in a little bit more with the net promoter score number would also tie back as a critical metric for her as well. Um, Jennifer uh, is asking, you know, can you break down your team? Yeah, I, um, we have six outside sales agents. Our agents can work with buyers and sellers. Um, we have four inside sales agents. Um, I do have a marketing manager, a manager, a listing manager. I have a slide somewhere, but uh, um, we have a director of public relations, a client. We have a team concierge, and um, uh, we have our own in-house uh, videographer and photographer. I love it. Can you kind of um, just quickly run through? We've got a few extra minutes here, and, and no other. We got maybe one question in the hopper, but. 
can you can you kind of just briefly kind of run through what their main critical metric of success is? Yeah, marketing manager is whether our marketing's working. Our director of public relations is going to be referrals and reviews. Our inside sales team is going to be appointment set. Our outside sales team is going to be conversion um, escrows, you know, all the sales metrics that we use. Um, we do have a scoreboard in our team, so they know where they stand at all times. Everybody's going to be a part of that, uh, that survey, that client experience, right? Because there's so many touches. They're going to hear from, if they're listing, they're going to hear from our listing manager, our closing manager, the agent. Um, so it, everybody's going to be involved in, um, in that. And if, they, if, our, if anybody on our team doesn't buy into our core values or they're affecting the client experience at, um, negatively and they're not able to change, that's just not somebody that would be a fit for our team. I love it. Um, team concierge, what are they, what, what's really their primary metric? Well, um, I, I don't like the word receptionist <laughs> and she's more than just a receptionist. Um, right. but she is the, um, she's somebody that we can all rely on to, uh, to be that smiling face when they come in to make sure that they have everything, coffee, tea, water, snacks. Are they hungry? Um, I mean, I brought in like donuts for um, at the end of showings because like the kids were hungry and the parents need to talk about putting an offer in. Um, you know, if we need as a team, like, hey, we have a client coming in for a buyer consult um, and, uh, you know, I, they really, uh, they're, they're coming straight from the airport. They're going to be hungry. Can we have some lunch there for them? You know, it, she's just there as the support for our team. So our team knows like they can tap into her and ask for these things because everybody on my team knows how important that customer service experience is. Yeah, I love it. Do, um, does anybody do, do you outsource the, the contract to close or do you have that in-house? That's in-house. I um, tried outsourcing and uh, it wasn't for us. Um, to really have the Wayner group stamp on our customer service experience. The only way I found that to work is to bring it in house. I agree 100%. Um, do you guys do any open houses? We do. Um, all of our agents, I don't, I, I'm not the uh, team leader to require agents to, to do open houses. Some agents prefer what we, we have lead generation menus. So some agents are going to prefer, they're really good at referrals. They don't do good or they don't like open houses. There's some agents on my team that absolutely kill it at open houses. So we are going to um, create a custom like lead generation and um, prospecting activities custom to that agent. But yeah, we do a lot of um, open houses and we do have mega agent open house procedures. So the agents that are doing open houses, I don't want them to throw a few signs up and just hope that someone walks in the door. There's going to be a step-by-step -step process that both our team and the agent is to implement so they have the most success when they're there. And when they're there, knowing how to talk to clients, knowing some scripting and some techniques to be able to where they're not just like providing cookies and a place for people to come in. I love it. Got a great question here. So what small steps would you recommend for an agent to get started with through this process? Um, are, are you a solo agent or are you a team? Probably solo agent. I would say, yeah, let's, let's go with solo agent. So I would write down the steps on a piece of paper, pen, or if you want to type it out on a Word doc, type out the steps to everything that you want to implement into your business or things that you see as uh, problems that you know that would be solutions to make sure your clients are happy and then implementing it into a system. So if you don't have a CRM, definitely get one. Um, if you have a CRM, learn how to build the action plan out. So every single time a buyer or seller comes in, the steps that you've created are just, are gonna be in the CRM and they're gonna force you to do them. And if you haven't read Emith, I would definitely um, read that. Um, whether I liked the book better than the Audible, there are both. Uh, but that will just set the foundation of why you need to systematize everything. Agree. It, it's a, it, it is a must, uh, a must read for sure. And look at, um, I have a really awesome activity. It's called time of your life. It's actually, it's actually terrible to do. Um, but for five days straight, our business week, we document every 15 minutes, what we do. I, we look at it at the end of the week and it's like astounding where we're spending some of our time. 
Now, everybody, I feel, in my opinion at least, should be leveraging something. If you're spending two hours on Skyslope a day, um, and that's not your, you're not an analytical, and that's your prospect, you're, and you're an agent, you need to find out ways to get that off of your plate. Outsource that, you can start with a virtual assistant, you can start with a part-time um, assistant in-house, you could start with a full-time assistant, um, but you really need to learn how to leverage, and that's a whole other webinar that we can do is leveraging. I love it, and uh, I have a feeling we'll have you back on in the future to uh, to jump in and share more uh, more knowledge, more nuggets with everybody. Jennifer, amazing, amazing call. Thank you for for taking the time and and adding value to everybody, and really being a true expert mentor, and and really what what these calls and these sessions are really all about. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me on. It was fun to share. And um, these are the three ways if somebody wants to reach out to me, anything I went over today, I'm happy to help and give back to the community. Um, you can either visit our website, agentgamechanger.com, our phone number there, and that's my email. I love it. For all of you on the call or listening to the recording, you know, share with us on Facebook and the groups. Give Jennifer some love. And please post and share your biggest takeaway. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, for those of you that are, that, are, that are on and, you know, that you're a true expert mentor and you want to add value, reach out to me and we'll get you on in the future. Thanks, guys. Jennifer, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.